Okay. Do you all, do you live uh, right here? Yes. yes. We live in, in a big, big building. building. Okay. Do you feel uh, very safe living this close to the fire department? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Do you see many of the firemen? Yes. yes. Uh huh. And are they nice to you? Yes. yes. What do you think about firemen in general in the city? In oh. the, like in New York State? Well, I, in uh, Stanford. How, what kind of job do you think they do overall? Um, they they help people who's in the fire. Something I don't know. They, <laughs> they go to false alarms. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of those. If somebody gets sick, then the ambulance yes, will come. 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 Yeah. Attention all units, this is base 200, signal 4, box 117. It's reported there's some type of fire at 55 Bank Street, that's Citizen Savings. Responding on the box is one company, three company, time out 1225. Going from one section of the city to the other section of the city, uh, of course now as you can see, we have what they call uh, Manhattanization of the city of Stanford. It's no more the little city that it was. It's a, it's a metropolis. We went from one or two-story buildings to 18-story buildings, 21-story buildings, and it's a, it's a big city now. And there's a, there's a challenge every day. Yes, they don't know our job when it's really firefighting, uh, putting out a fire in a building. But yet they're the first to call us for anything. I think you mentioned that before, you heard that before. The calls for plumbing problems or their electrical problems, uh, for anything, any minor thing. Somebody's sick in the house, they'll call the fire department first before they call uh, the police. One phone call does it all. I, I really never had any interest in becoming a firefighter. I, you know, the old cliche when you were a little boy, you want to be a fireman, but I, I had no interest. Well, once I got on the job, uh, and I, I saw the camaraderie of the men and, and the, the, uh, the chance to take part and help the community a little bit, I, I really became interested in, and uh, I like the job. The job has done very well for me, and I, I like to think I helped in a little way to put this department together and uh, had some contribution to it anyway. My Mary, I'm being honest. Uh, maybe people, uh, they want to hear me say, yeah, I always wanted to be a fireman or I want to follow the sirens. Well, that's a crock. If you want to speak the truth, I came here to support my family. I needed the money. It was a good job, good security. The challenge, the challenge of the job, it's uh, every day it's something different. And uh, I think most of the fellas feel the same way. It's the uh, a certain amount of uh, anticipation, uh, the action that we have here. You're always helping somebody. The security factor probably falls in. You know, it becomes very important at times of economic stress and so on and so forth. We have a job. It's sort of hard to, not hard to get rid of us. You can get rid of us, but once you've uh, established yourself, you do have it. We don't make a lot of money, but we always have a job. I want to put the fire out by myself. I, mean, I don't want anybody around me. I want to, I want to do the whole thing. I, I just love being there. That was, that was myself. That was my main reason, you know. The, the, the benefits and the, 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 the security had nothing to do with it. And the dedication to the city, I just love being at fire space. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a pyromaniac, that I know. Prob Any problems with the job? I mean, everybody would like to see more equipment, more men, newer equipment. You don't have enough tape? There should be an improvement in communications between the administrative level and the uh, line officers, between staff and line officers. Here we work our shifts eight in the morning to six at night. If you're working nights, you work six at night till eight in the morning. And uh, it's, uh, some people never get used to it. I guess the wives never really get used to it. It's something too that you uh, adjust to over the years. You do get used to it, but it is tough on a family. I think I'm underpaid. What the hell, I don't care. <laughs> you tell that to the mayor if you want. Like a few groups, a couple of groups, there's conflicts within the group members, you know, like they're in their own little, their own little, cliques or you know whatever you want to call it but this group is more or less you know one pretty happy pretty happy family you know uh, one thing about the cotton clothes the wives don't like it because they're not permanent press <laughs> they're tough to iron and stuff but that's uh, something else uh that's the wife's problem right <laughs> being, being chauvinistic right <laughs> and i mean i saw it say dual list i'm talking uh a list for for whites and a list for minorities for appointment purposes. Supposedly they're taking the same test that we are, but uh, that's a very moot question as to whether it is the same test, the same civil service test that everyone else is taking. So there's a morale factor involved as to 
are they qualified? Who's qualified to come on a job? Supposedly there are certain set standards that you have to meet. And that's what you look for. They think that you're taking advantage of them. They think that you're lazy, that they think that you're sitting around the firehouse watching television, sleeping all night. They think all these things until you start talking to them, and then they realize how important our job is. People think that you don't work unless you're out there digging a ditch or, or banging nails in. And they feel that people that... I don't know, for some reason, they, they always view the, the fire department on, on a negative basis. I and mean, they don't think of the Army who's, you know, sitting around doing the same thing, waiting for a war to happen, like we're waiting for a fire to happen. I mean, they don't say, well, we don't need an army. And that's what the public doesn't understand. That's no. what they don't see. They'll never see it. Unless they're in a fire, and we can take them out. <laughs> and then they'll hey, appreciate the firemen are great. Then they'll appreciate what, what we're doing, because they just came, you know, they're behind you getting burned or whatever. But they're not home when we go there. Jesus Christ, look what you did to my goddamn window. Oh, you broke the door. Look at my couch. Mm -hmm. All they see is they went they left the house. It was nice. They come home, we chopped it all up. You know, but if they were in there, drop the door down, get me out. You know, it's a different story. It's a whole different ballgame. <laughs> On the uh, night of January 3rd, 1983, about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, we received an alarm for a fire at United Organics, a company on Ludlow Street. Uh, we knew from pre-fire planning that the building held many chemicals, although at that time we weren't sure exactly which types. Before we got anything set up, uh, acting deputy chief, acting captain of one company, and two firefighters were going around to the back to survey the back side of the building because they went down the alleyway. A large explosion and a fireball caught them in the alleyway. All four were severely burned. Initially after that, it was you know, chaos down there for a little while. No, I... I'm, I'll never, I was never sorry for any reason that I was, that was a fireman. Uh, you take this job and you, you say, well, there's a good chance I'll get hurt. There's also a chance that I won't get hurt. For 25 years I did the job and for 25 years I wasn't going to get hurt. Uh, everybody else was and that's the way it was. I never got hurt. I mean, I took chances, I came close, but that don't count. You forget about those things. And like I say, I never regret, not for a minute, never being a fireman. If I had it to do over again, I would take that one night off, January 3rd, 1983, and get me wrong about that. It's time for reflection. And I did, personally, really look very strongly at what had happened and see, you know, what am I doing? Well, I think, first of all, I don't think a camera could capture the actual uh, scene inside a fire. You, first of all, your camera couldn't take pictures inside a fire. Mm -hmm. You'd never see nothing, because we don't see nothing. And we're right there. That's it. <laughs> uh, you, can't, you can't feel the heat. You can't feel the steam, and you're sucking for the air because you're getting excited. You know, it's completely dark. You can't see. All you hear is the the huffing and puffing of the mask. You got 30 pounds of and clothes on And you may back. hear a little crackling and you feel heat and then you feel wishes of steam. And you don't, you know, you're just encapsulated in there and you're by yourself. But ours is more of a sensual type of job. If you understand what I mean? You know, it was, you, our senses are attacked. Attention all units, this is base 200, signal four, box 117. It's reported there's some type of fire at 55 Bank Street, that's citizen savings. Responding on the boxes, one company, three company, timeout 1225.